and for people who just love Vince McMahon news, we've always got Vince McMahon news. If you don't, tough. Uh, this is the clash, uh, clash, class action lawsuits building against Vince. So, with it being confirmed that federal prosecutors are now once again investigating Vince McMahon, a website has now been launched, wwesettlements.com, to encourage others to come forward in the hopes of getting enough claimants to launch a class action suit, I imagine, anyway. Uh, WWE founded, this is actually from the website itself, WWE founded Vince McMahon under investigation for exploitation and sex trafficking. Vince McMahon, and here's a bit of interesting wording they've put here. Vince McMahon and WWE slash UFC, that will come up several times, are under investigation for sexual assault and sex trafficking after former employees of WWE slash UFC came forward with allegations of profoundly disturbing misconduct. According to a recent lawsuit, the founder and other leaders forced employees to participate in sexual acts by threatening to terminate their employment and share intimate images of them. I won't read the rest of it, but it says 1992 Rita Chatterton was the first, and in 2022... In, uh, to uh, make a claim publicly, and in 2022, investigators seized documents and discovered non-disclosure agreements and multi-million dollar payouts, covering up sexual misconduct and thousands of abuse victims are speaking up every year to receive compensation and justice they deserve. Fill in the form above or call us today for a confidential and free conversation with one of our female attorneys. So, do you remember a few weeks ago we were talking Dutch and uh, I, th- I can't remember uh, Anne Callis, I think the 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 uh, Janelle Grant's lawyer is called. She's yes, yeah. So with all that being said, it seems that if you remember a few weeks ago, Anne Callis, Janelle Grant's lawyer, had said that she received loads of credible emails about potential uh, potential victims and potential victims yes. who may have enough proof for a case. That now she's started. I imagine it's her started a website up to maybe launch a class action suit. So what do you see happening from here? Do you think dozens of women are going to come out, and do you think they're after a payday, or do you think they're after taking Vince down once and for all? You think? You think they're after a payday? Well, they're all going to be after a payday. But do you think a lot of them are actually as important oh, to them, or more important, they just want to see Vince in prison? No, they're they're mad at Vince. They're mad at Vince. I've been hearing this for, well, as soon as, you know, when you start hearing about the behind the scenes working at, this was years ago, WWF, you always heard this stuff. That there was a lot of, you know, like forced sex or extorted or coerced or whatever word you want to use. Mm-hmm. But that that was for that was par for the course. So, and remember, we were talking before we went on the air that I think this is the calm before the storm. I think all the all the witnesses, people who have something to say about Vince, uh, and what was that lady's name? What was her name? The lawyer, the lawyer the, Ann Callis, I believe. Ann Callis. That's the same name as Mark Callis, the Undertaker. Oh, no, he was mean Mark and, Callis, where this is Callis. The same as Don Callis, in fact. No relation. Oh, okay. But I, I think when they get all this up, I think you won't be able to pick a paper up for a week that you're not reading something about somebody who came out of the woodwork. Hmm. And somebody asked me the other day, this is, well, when did all this bizarre sexual activity or sexual talk began in the WWE, well, our WWF. Well, it never stopped. When as soon as I got there, I heard, uh, well, it was mostly homosexual slanted then because Vince had a, a lot of guys there that were gay which I don't give a crap, but I would hear, and we've been, I, and this story has been backed up by who was the guy that I saw? Uh, uh, what was his name? Romo? Uh, Paul Roma. Paul Roma. He told the story about his partner being solicited by one of the gay guys mm-hmm. in WWE, and he ended up leaving, but he says, uh, in leaving, actually, he 
he he threw Paul under the bus too because they did nothing with him. And then you start hearing about the Rita Chatterton case that made big news. And so it looks like to me that Vince has always had that in his DNA and he couldn't shake it. But now what I, I'm going to say that I think there's some settlements being made, but if this is taken to trial, I think it's not going to be good for WWE or Endeavor. And I think that's where your big payoffs are going to come in because when they know that it's going to go mainstream, they would rather pay. And there's a billion dollar company anyway. They would rather pay the money than to go through this daily roasting that the media will apply to them. Well, they could still get a criminal. You know, they could they still can. get criminal charges as well. So they may end up paying a huge amount and then get criminal yeah. charges levied well, against them anyway. This could turn into a, what was it, Harvey Weinstein? Yep. Weinstein? Weinstein? Yeah. It, it could turn into that and he ended up going to jail. But now, when you have the FBI showing up at Titan Towers and saying, we'd like to talk to so-and-so and so-and-so, of course, you just wouldn't hear about that on the day they showed up. They would know about it a couple of days before. I think panic would run through that building because people, they, have, they may not have had anything to do with Vince and his proclivities, let me say that. And but they damn sure don't want to be brought into it. So they're going to be saying all they know, and they damn sure don't want to lie for Vince when they had nothing, and all they had was a job. It may have been a pretty good job, but if they catch you lying to the FBI, you know that's that's not that's not good news. You could go to jail for that, I guess. You could, you, you could be punished for it. But I think this is the calm before the storm. And I think in about four to six weeks, I think the lawyers will have it under, under a, a pretty good idea of what they're going to do. And then it'd be a great time to be a lawyer in Stanford right now. Mm -hmm. because you, it's not going to be a lack of activity because, and I wonder what they're saying on the street in Stanford about that building that sits over there. You know, most people in Stanford, they just see the building. They don't know what goes on inside of it. And they've often wondered, I wonder what goes on behind that door. And then they hear all this stuff and this, that, and the other. I guess it's taken on a little bit of a folklore status in Stanford. I don't know. But I don't think this is the last we're going to hear of it. I think it's going to last longer than we think and take longer to go away, especially with the legal activity. Yeah, because you mentioned Paul Romer, we're going to uh, we're going to come back on some other stuff that we're going to uh, talk about. But we'll go straight to Paul Romer here. So uh, he was on News Nation's uh, well YouTube channel and show with Ashley Banfield, who's really been the lead. Uh, sort of media personality to sort of take on this case and interview a lot of people, uh, you know, who are willing to talk about it, quite frankly. So, um, Roma talked about, um, and he mentioned that he knows of wrestlers who left WWF due to being asked for sexual favours. So this is not so much Vince McMahon, but this is the people he surrounded himself with. So uh, there's a lot of quotes here. I'll try and rush through them if I can. Uh, Roma said it wasn't so much Vince as it was the people that he had surrounding him. You're talking about an industry where you have young, good-looking, well-built men in the ring, half naked, three-quarters naked, actually. So, yeah, I mean, it left a door open. Vice presidents and bookers that were very much into that, and they put you in a really, really bad situation, especially once you started making some money. You kind of get comfortable with that, and then you find out that your job's on the line. Either you do it, or you get fired. And I witnessed quite, yep, quite a few that walked away. The money wasn't worth it for them to go that route, so to speak. So when Roma was asked to clarify what the wrestlers were asked to do, he responded they were asked to do sexual things with other men that they did not want to. My former partner being one of them. I was actually in now a he's cabaret. Talking about, now he's talking about the male participants now, in WWE. Yeah. So um, 
uh, I don't, I'm not sure he's talking about Jim Powers here. He may be talking about someone else, but uh, I was actually in a cab ride in Washington. We were coming back, and a gentleman next to me kept saying, it's not worth it, it's not worth the Benjamins, it's not worth the Benjamins. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, it's just not worth it. We got back to our hotel room. The next day, we were filming for our second TV taping, and he was gone. He jumped on a flight and went back home and never showed up again to wrestle, and he had an unfortunate accident and hit his head and passed away while he was asleep. He had a bleed on the brain. Now, Roman... who, now, who was this? Can you name the guy? I don't know. I'm trying to think who fell and hit their head and had a bleed on the brain and died. I mean, the only other tag team partner I know that Paul Roma had in WWF was Hercules. But did, is that how Hercules passed away? I don't know. So anyway, Roma continued. Jim Powers was uh, propositioned. So this is something that Jim's talked about as well, as you well know. He said he went to one of the agents and told them what had happened. And I said, why would you do that? You just ratted on both of us. So he kind of threw us both under the bus, he being Jim Powers and Paul Roma, when we were just starting out. When asked, asked to clarify if it was executives within the company who were propositioning these wrestlers, Roma responded, let's leave it this way. That's all it could be. If somebody is going to give you money, then it has to be that. There is nothing else. It's not going to be one of the other boys that you're wrestling with. They're not going to offer you money. Even my former partner, same thing. They offered him money. <laughs> Cheap wrestlers. Yes. <laughs> and not going to offer you any money. No, the wrestlers <laughs> won't offer you anything. Uh, they offered him money, drugs. And here's a quote. Just lay on your back. You don't have to do a thing. And he came running right to me when I came into TV and I said, dude, what are you going to do? And he said, oh, I've already spoke to Arnold. Uh, I believe Arnold Skoland at the time. Yeah, Ar Arnold Skoland, yeah. yes. And I said, well, why did you do that? You just killed our team. What do you think he's going to do? He's just going to to, uh, to the people that propositioned you. Um, there's one more thing I want to add. I'm um, sorry for all this reading. Uh, but when asked about a story that Mario Mancini had said, he was also a recent guest on News Nation, and he mentioned that there was a story that was even worse than anything in the Janelle Grant lawsuit. Roma confirmed he knows the story and speculated the victim may not want to open Pandora's box by coming out with their allegations now. So Roma said, I really shouldn't right now, but yes, I do know what it is, and it is worse. Mario and I are really surprised we spoke about it, and we're surprised that no one has come forward. But on the flip side, I think that they're of an age now where they may be married and have kids, and they don't want to open Pandora's box, and I can't blame them. So I want to know. I want to know that story. Yeah. If it's worse than the Janelle Grant, as it's described, that'd have to be pretty bad. I would think. I'm struggling to figure out what it could possibly be that's worse beyond what's in the lawsuit, beyond just Vince straight up just you know killing someone or like imprisoning them or something. Hmm. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty good little hint there. So I want to I want to know what that is yeah. to judge for myself. I can ask whether we'll ever. Well, we'll know one day, hmm. even if this the suit runs its course or whatever. Eventually, one day I'll just pick up the phone and I'll call him and say, "Hey, I need to know." Just. So I can put it on my podcast. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> pretend I don't have a popular podcast and just tell me everything you know. Yeah. And let, let me just push this little button right here, record. Yep. <laughs> Got it. So that was the Paul Roma recounting of it. You also watched Jimmy Powers talking about it on a RF video shoot from 2013. So uh, anything else you can add to that from what Jimmy Powers said on there? Now, what did he say? I don't know if I saw that or not. Oh, did you know what? I that thought. One? I thought, I thought I did. What was he saying? Uh, essentially, he said, you know, there's Terry Garvin and Pat Patterson and Jim Barnett, who was there at the time, and basically the same thing as Paul said. Uh, he said uh, he was propositioned by... He didn't actually say who propositioned him, but I suspect one of those three, and said, I would rather be pumping the gas on the New Jersey Turnpike than accept money and uh, sort of go against his morals in mm -hmm. that sense for a, for a push. And they both said that, you know, they equate powers not only denying uh, whoever it was what they wanted off him, uh, but uh, basically said that, you know, their tag team got shunted down to the bottom of the card. 